Hey, hey, all you mentees, this is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition. And join me today as I do an overview of this Street Fighter hardcover collections from Udon Entertainment. So please stay tuned. Welcome back, all you mentees. Now, this is a video that a lot of you have been wanting me to do for quite some time. And I don't know why I've postponed so long, but here it is. All the Street Fighter books in hardcover format. I'm mainly focusing on the comics, not the art books. If you all want to see that video, please let me know in the comments down below. And go ahead and hit subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day. And before I get started, a big shout out to my boy Geo, a week in geekdom. He's been buying these uh, Street Fighter uh, hardcover collections, and it just reminded me how much I love these, and I need to make a video to talk about them. So, let's go ahead and get started. This is practically it. This is the complete collection, where we go from Volume 1, taking us all the way to the Unlimited Volume 3. And then you're caught up. One of the things that I love about these Udon books the most is the consistency of the spines and the designs of them. I love that all the characters are up at the top, the title of the book is here with the numbers, of course, the volume numbers, and then you have the little characters at the bottom. And they're all the same dimensions. There's no dust jacket, of course, they're all hardcover. Um, now, to do a little size comparison, I'm just going to use this one as an example. Here it is compared to the size of Inferno. This is an oversized hardcover, but it's the same size as an omnibus. So as you can tell, the book back here is bigger and longer. And I swear I'm not flexing my Inferno. Just make sure you're subscribed to the channel and watch all our videos. Just saying. Maybe it's a little payoff for those that watch all of my videos. So let's talk about these hardcovers first of all. Uh, the original three, the classics, retail for $49.99, and they have about 300 pages in them. This is what my original uh, complete collection looked like with that cover. And then the paper quality is freaking amazing. We are talking this thick, glossy paper that I haven't seen and very many Omnis or oversized hardcovers in years. So it kicks off with Street Fighter, the original series, uh, based on the Street Fighter 2 video game. So if you haven't played the video game, not really sure why you're getting the comic book. This is more for fans of the video game, unless you're fans of the artwork, because the artwork is amazing. Now, the comics original, look at that beautiful Arnold Sang piece of art right there of Kami. Um, the comic books came out every month, and then there were some delays by Udon. There were a studio that were around for a little while. They did some work for Marvel, um, and then decided to make their own and start publishing their own books. So they kicked it off with this. And the two main artists on this ongoing series were Arnold Sang and Alvin Lee. Two of the best, at least in my opinion, the very best when it came to Udon Studios. There are also other artists you probably noticed. One of my favorite artists at the beginning here, Joe Madureira. Uh, there's other artists in here like Adam Warren. Pretty much anybody that has ever... Mark Brooks, just to name a few. Uh, Jeffrey Scott Campbell. Uh, and of course, Humberto Ramos. Uh, Jeff, um, Scotty Young. What I was going to say is pretty much anybody that's ever been influenced by video games or anime does a little short story in here. Like For example, I'll use this one here. So in between chapters, you get little stages, and the stages are broken down in chronological order, so they fit in between the stories. So here's a story of Cammy's family by Adrian Alfona, who's the artist on Runaways, and of course, co-created uh, Miss Marvel, or I'm sorry, she uh, drew the Miss Marvel miniseries, but, you know, heavily inspired by anime and video games, and here's a Mark Brooks cover. But it's mainly Alvin Lee. All the covers are collected in here. All the variant covers are collected in here. Every bit of the extra. These pieces. That is LaShawn Thomas. This is one of my favorite pieces of arts within the book. And then back here, you get more of the variants, such as these beautiful covers by Joe Chen. I'm not sure what she is doing these days, but I was a big fan of her uh, covers for Buffy. And then where else you can find Street Fighter. So that's volume one. That's where it kicks that's what kicks off the series. Let's look at volume two and talk a little bit about the story. Uh, I mentioned Adam Warren earlier, and here he is. He's the guy that pretty much he he was one of the early pioneers of this American style manga art. 
He did Dirty Pair, Bubblegum Crisis, and is known for his Empowered series. So here's the way the stages are broken down. Oh, and before I look at the stages, just wanted to show this is the second collection of the trade paperback. And I'll talk a little bit about why I decided to upgrade. Let's go back to the stages because I wanted to mention some things. So the first volume, the first hardcover, collects issues 1 through 10 of the original Street Fighter series. Then we had Street Fighter 2. So this collects 11 through 14, so pretty much the rest of those uh, issues of the first series. And then we got Street Fighter 2 issues 0 through 6 in here. So that was the follow-up series. Look at that Joe Mad variant. Oh, I'm so glad they collect every bit of the variants in here. And all the little extra stories in the back. I was always a big fan of this. This has a bunch of, or two variant covers, I think. The normal version and then the Sagat's Redemption version. And there is Scotty Young. This was his uh, older art style. He does another one, little one shot later on. Or I'm sorry, a little side story later on. So you see all these familiar characters here, not only from the pages of Street Fighter 2, but also from Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter 3, even characters from Final Fight. It's a bunch of little Easter eggs for people that play the video games. So why did I make the upgrade to these if I already had the big, fat, thick collections? Well, those were not built well. Even though they retailed for $60, they started falling apart. Here, let's look at the extras here in the back while I talk about that, because we need to keep moving. So they started falling apart, like the pages, the bunches started coming apart because they were glued binding on a soft cover. And then when they announced these, I even hesitated because I was like, I'm not going to buy anymore because I had the single issues, the graphic novel, which is the smaller scale trade paperbacks, and then the big, big, thick, fat collections. And those are the ones that started falling apart on me. So I was like, well, let, let's look, let's, let's wait and see. Maybe I have to see it firsthand to see what the build looks like. And well... Let's just say I was happy with it, and I was like, okay, I'm going to get it, because I saw it at a comic book store, uh, flipped through some pages, looked at the build, looked at it was sewn binding, so yes, these books do have sewn binding, and there's the eye. So, your book can be read with no gutter loss. So here is Classic Volume 3, Collecting Street Fighter 2 Turbo, the 12-issue Maxi Series. So this was a follow-up to Street Fighter 2. And anybody that plays the video games knows that, right? Like, we went from Street Fighter to Street Fighter 2 to Street Fighter 2 Champions Edition, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, and Street Fighter... What the hell was the last one called? Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo... Oh, man. Super Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Um, until we got to Akuma. So, by now, it's still Alvin Lee that's doing most of the artwork. However... Um, Arnold Sang has kind of stepped back a little bit, but I do want to show this off first. This wonderful Akuma piece of art. That was, I think, a variant to uh, one of the Fat Collections. Uh, let's go back here. So Alvin Lee is now joined by this other artist named Jeffrey uh, Cruz Chamba. Chamba, this gentleman right here, whose art to me has always stood out. He did some um, artwork in the tribute book. That just blew me away. I was like, man, this guy's good. And they were just pinups. They weren't sequential art. But the the guy the guy is awesome. They just recently did a Kickstarter. We shared it on our Facebook account a couple of about a month or so ago. And all the extras that were missing from uh, the very first two hardcovers are all collected in here. Here's all the variants here in the back. I've always been a big fan of this Arnold Sang piece. I used to have this poster. So, ah, man. Sorry, it's hard not to flip through all of these. So, like I said, this is what kicks off Street Fighter. So, where do you go from here? So, I present you the very first three, pretty much, limited series uh, that they were doing because of the delays. This is Street Fighter Legends Chun-Li. This is the very first limited series. And the way that I have these, by the way, uh, laid out are in the reading order that I prefer. So you can keep all your legends together because they also did an Ibuki and Kami series. But I don't like reading those until after I've read Super Street Fighter. So these are not Alvin Lee or Arnold Sang or Jeffrey uh, Cruz Chamba. Matter of fact, this one and the Sakura are done by Omar Dogen. I like that name. Actually, I got to meet him and he did a sketch for me many years ago. Now let's look at... Sakura really quick. These were previously collected in a big, thick, uh, soft cover edition too. Yeah, this is also Omar Dogen. 
and these retail for $34.99. However, you can probably tell the page count is a lot less than 304 pages because they only have four issues in here. So this is what the artwork looks like, and it focuses on these characters from Street Fighter Alpha. Well, this one here does, with Sakura and Karen and Rainbow Mika, and even characters from rival schools. And here is Akuma. This one isn't drawn by Omar Dogen. This one is uh, Joe Ning. Ning? Oh my goodness, it's NG, and I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that properly. So this is the origin of Akuma and what happened between him and Master Goken. Um, because that's pretty much the story of Street Fighter, really. All right, let's move on. The next book I have in the reading order when I do these is Street Fighter 4, uh, Volume 1. But there was only one volume, also retailing for $34.99. And just collecting the Street Fighter 4 series. And you guessed it, it features characters from Street Fighter 4, the video game. But the Street Fighter comic really is the best way to do a video game comic. You take the best aspects of the Street Fighter 2 storyline, because that's mainly what it focuses on. It focuses on the relationship between Ken and Ryu as they travel the world trying to find clues as to who killed their master, Goken, right? And that's pretty much it. Through it, they get to uh, find all the secret organization of Shadow Law, and the names are not the names that you found in Japan. Japan. But the names like that we've come to know them here in America, like this is Akuma, not Goki, or for example, um, M. Bison is M. Bison, not Vega. I just wanted to throw that out there. I don't know how they're translated when they're in the Japanese, but in the American version, that's how they're translated. Now, we gotta quickly fly through the rest. So that takes us to the Super Street Fighter series. This was an ongoing series, and again, this follows... Uh, in a weird way, it follows up Volume 4. Now we have, like I mentioned, Jeffrey Chamba Cruz drawing the ongoing series. I'm a big fan of his artwork. And I love when they started doing this. They started putting the stage selects here. So one thing I haven't talked about that I need to talk about. Oh, and by the way, all of these have sewn binding. All these books. None of them have glued binding. Um, one of the things I haven't talked about is who is this book for? Who is this series for? Well, if you're a fan of Street Fighter, then you're already getting these, right? Because I can't imagine anybody that hasn't played the video game or even familiar with maybe maybe even the animated movie or the TV series that used to be on USA. Um, not, like, picking these up just out of the blue. Maybe, maybe because of the artwork by these anime-inspired artists. I don't know. I can't imagine somebody just randomly picking this stuff up here. Let's move on to the next series. And not really next series, but this is where I would read Ibuki and Kami. So let's look at Ibuki. This is by Omar Dogen again. Um, so yes, if you're a fan of the Street Fighter series and you haven't picked these up, these are a lot of fun. They're... How do I put them? They're not the greatest stories because when you're buying a Street Fighter comic, you kind of know what you're in for, right? But they are... a damn ton of fun there's a lot of just wonderful moments that happen in here if you're a fan of either the street fighter 2 franchise or just played street fighter 4 or street fighter 5 like there's a lot of moments in here that will make you smile and realize man I really miss uh going to the arcades let's look at the next one this is cammy uh one thing i didn't Note is that these are written by Jim Sub, you know, who's done work for Marvel, he's done work for DC. Uh, that's one thing I really didn't talk about are the writers on these books. So those first volumes were all written by Ken Sui Chung. He was the main writer on the books. And then we had, uh, <laughs> I forgot that that's, uh, <laughs> this is loosely based after Manara, and that is Frank Cho. Leave it to Frank Cho. All right. And here we have the latest series to be collected in hardcover format. This is Street Fighter Unlimited. These retail for $29.99. So out of all the hardcovers, these are the cheapest. And there he is again, Ken Sui Chung, and art by Joe Nung. NG. So this right here, I, I read one time, and I don't even remember what happened, but the things that stood out about this series are the amazing variant covers which were like homages to other comic books out there so let's let, let me see if they're in here okay so here we have a take on secret wars of course it's drawn by long vote and a take on 
<laughs> X-Men Alpha. See what I mean? This is completely worth it. I love it. Take on The Walking Dead and Archie. And then these amazing covers back here. Don't they have a hot... Yeah, I was going to say, they have a hot Ryu there with Chun-Li, who's a goddess. Man. Yeah, these homage covers are awesome so here's pretty much what they do at the end they tell you where you can get the books and i didn't talk about the encyclopedia because i'm focusing just on the comic books here and then of course there's these wonderful art books that they're putting out and the tributes are awesome and then always in the back this is where they put the credits like who drew it uh who the colors were and of course the story let's look at the final two volumes i even got robbed some of these like i remember for a couple of his birthdays that whether he read them or not i don't know and i'm sure by now you can probably tell holy crap that's a lot of characters from not just street fighter 2 but street fighter alpha street fighter 3 street fighter 4 and every version of street fighter 3 by the way not just the very first one and i think there's a new series right now that are focusing on street fighter 5 characters so it's still ongoing i love it and, and the reason i did this kind of like the way that i do uh, put them in reading orders because it gets confusing with all the different titles here let's look at the awesome variants here yes oh that's the x-men one i think that was supposed to be psylocke and rogue i think wildcats and see these are just fun kingdom come uh they also put designs for statues back here because these guys are huge udon was so huge that they are the ones that redid Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 in HD format on the PS3. So that's how popular, that's how huge they were. Let's look at the last one. As I talk a little bit about that, that's why there were so many delays in the first few volumes because they were busy pretty much redrawing Street Fighter 2 for the next generation. I have no idea how long this video is going to be. I'm going to try to cut it shorter than what i've been talking but i just wanted to show off this amazing artwork because the artwork is really the driving force behind these books the reason that so many people get them they have so much amazing talent over there and i know they've done a mega man book and i'm gonna do a mega man video i'm waiting on a couple more books to come in um and uh, so this all leads into the street fighter versus dark stalkers crossover which i'll look at that here in a second Look at that. They even threw in Street Fighter 2010. So if you're a fan of the Nintendo game, what was it called? Street Fighter 2010, the final fight is what it was called. Uh, Robot Master Magnet. Oh, see, see what I mean? All these little homages back here are just phenomenal. That's actually an Udon uh, book that they did. What's the Deadpool Udon cover? Here's where you can find the rest of the Street Fighter books. I can't wait for more in hardcover format. Now, last but not least, let's really quickly look at this Street Fighter vs. Darkstalkers book. So here it is, Street Fighter vs. Darkstalkers. This one retails for $49.99, but it collects the entire event. This is where everything led up to, and it is canon, because it features characters from Street Fighter 4, uh, I think some characters from Street Fighter 5, and then, of course, the entire Darkstalkers characters. So I've done an overview of Darkstalkers if you want to check that out. But this is the big event that it all led to. And now we're waiting for more collections of the Street Fighter books. But I quickly wanted to go through here and just look at some of this artwork. All of this, of course, still written by Ken Sui Chung. And yeah, hopefully I was able to trigger some memories of going to the arcade or having these on a home console like the Sega Saturn, because we all knew that was the best fighting console, well, up until the Dreamcast. I just love those Sega Saturn controllers. Anyway, I think I've gone on way too long about these, but how could I not? I mean, it's it's Street Fighter, it's Darkstalkers, it's Udon, uh, it's Capcom. So, there you have it. Now you can pick up most of these books from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books 
products with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. That's it. These are the hardcovers that I love so much that bring back so many memories of sitting at the arcade or waiting in line at the arcade with my quarter on the machine ready to take on the next dude. But anyway, I'd love to know who else is collecting them, who's gotten the trade paperbacks, who's gotten the single issues. I've been a big fan since the very first issue dropped, and I cannot wait for more of these hardcover collections. Let me know in the comments down below if you've never read any of these, or if you're not even a fan of Street Fighter and you just started reading the comic book. I would love to know all those comments down below. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We can be found on Patreon and Redbubble, great ways to support the channel, and thank you so much to our existing patrons. And more importantly, please everybody stay healthy, stay safe, and much love to all of you.